From the Rangaroo Studios, this is the COB, brought to you by eToro. Invest in ASX shares with $0 commission. Good afternoon, this is the COB. It's great to have your company on another day. And uh, well, my name's Kyle Rotter, here with Danny, Danny Akuye. Akuye. <laughs> Jinx. Uh, let's get a look at the local market, shall we? Uh, we'll start with that because it's been fairly negative today. Uh, you think really uh, it's, a, it's a debt ceiling, ceiling story here? Is there more going on? How, how do you uh, perhaps um, diagnose this? Uh, well, it's probably a little bit of the debt ceiling. It's mm -hmm. also, I think, the Dalian um, September iron ore futures. They were selling off as well, so maybe the materials are a bit weaker off that. Consumer discretionary, that got really heavily hit today, um, and we might be checking in with some of those share prices. And I think that, um, you know, just markets have done quite well, so it's time possibly to take some risk off the table if there's any volumes i mean volumes have been crazy like let's just have a look here yeah, yeah maybe a tiny bit better today but still just my casual observation looking at csl i mean volumes are still pretty low so mm. if volumes are low prices are going to move where you know most of the the participants are and if they're on the sell side well, buyers don't have to step up to the plate, do they? No, certainly a lack of buyers, it would seem, out there at the moment. But let's get across the three things, well, because there's a few things going on. We just uh, we will speak about that kind of late session drop in uh, well, iron ore futures and the subsequent sell-off we had seen in the miners. But uh, we've already spoken about the uh, debt ceiling. Now we seem to be hitting that in some sense. <laughs> uh, at the dovish surprise from the RBNZ, um, yes. which yeah. at the margin has had a little bit of an impact on the market. Um, but mostly in the currency space, we did see the Kiwi dollar falling yep. significantly. And a bit of weakness. We're sub 66 cents for the Australian dollar. There you go. So there you go. Uh, and uh, well, confession season continues to roll through. We've had a few trading updates. Obviously, uh, they uh, corporates try and polish those things as well as they possibly can. But well, if you look at some of the uh, consumer stocks over the last few days, uh, especially Universal, uh, that yeah. was um, a pretty pretty painful sell off. Um, but again, we'll pick that apart as we roll through. A few, we, we just spoke about the miners. Let's yep. have a look at where the miners have wrapped up the day's trade now, because again, um, a little bit, oh, we've uh, got the uh, the wrong graphic. Let's move on there. Unfortunately, that's uh, that's incorrect again. We're gonna have to fix that bug. Uh, and that's uh, the gold price over the last uh, couple of days after the last 24 hours or so, just tell, uh, conveying a little bit some of the, uh, the risk aversion coming through there. So uh, we'll push on, we'll talk about the miners again a little bit more, but- um, Yeah, oh, just looking, Universal Stores, my mm. gosh, that's down 24% today. Yeah, and well, let's, let's get, get onto that because it seems to be that uh, despite their best efforts to uh, sugarcoat it, it's another disappointment and another warning about a, a, a weaker consumer. Yeah, and I think our colleague Nadine make a really good point that this was a company that was meant to be more resilient in terms of the consumer, as in the youth that weren't going to be so impacted by rising interest rates. But clearly they, they didn't provide guidance and they did provide guidance and clearly the guidance has been provided. Like Stand to be rich parents or something. Like What's that. sorry? Teenagers with rich parents or something? Is that like the? <laughs> I don't know, no. but clearly the guidance wasn't good, and we've also seen stocks like Levisa, which of course is a market darling mm. and has been performing really strongly. Well, that was down almost seven percent today, and maybe it's now the view that the market's coming around to like the, all consumers are going to be hit by this because unless you have a parent that's going to you know fill the coffers, the young are experiencing rising rents. Um, and maybe there's a little bit concern over job security. Who knows? Yeah, of course. Well, I've been shopping at Vinnie's for a while now, and I couldn't be happier, to be honest. I've got myself a great pair of heels. I was and, about uh, to say, those fancy boots. Those fancy heels. <laughs> uh, add an extra, yeah, sort of uh, two and a half inches to your height, and um, also <laughs> kept an extra 50 bucks in my pocket. It's a great deal. Anyway, you can't invest on St. Vinnie's, in St. Vinnie's in the share market, so we'll push on. Um, Webjet, though, was uh, a big, big news of the day. Uh, yeah. I, I, Sort of spoke a lot yesterday, didn't we, with Martin Crabbe from Shore & Partners about yeah, the travel of, thematic. And absolutely. It's one of the outliers today, in fact. It seems to have um, rallied. Yeah, up about 4.4%. So um, it's something we might touch on with our guests because mm. I, I think Mark's got a really good point there. But yeah, I do know that Martin Crabbe, Shore & Partners, really like the stock, still think the travel theme has a lot more to run. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, ultimately, I suppose if the consumer's purse is going to be hit, 
once they've had their revenge travel, one might think that they might just, you know, stop travelling, but not for the moment. No, still uh, wanting to get out there in the world, it would seem. And well, Webjet was the stock of the day. We had Carl Kaplinger from Think Markets and Scott Phillips from The Motley Fool giving us their view. would never tell anybody to sell a chart that looks like that, even if it was fully valued. Because at the end of the day, everything I've just told you is based upon my opinions. The fund managers who do make the market, they're seeing something in this that is supporting those higher prices. So I'm a happy holder. I've, I've been on many times, I think I've last few months telling people to hold on to this one, despite the fact it's gone up. I'm going to reiterate that today. Uh, would I buy it here? I don't. I'm not sure if I'm a buy here, just that valuation's holding back, but maybe I'm contradicting myself. So, yeah, look, I'll, I'll, have, I will call it a buy. I'm not a fan of Webjet, I have to say, long term. Now, Carl's got a different trading perspective, and that's what makes the market, as, as he rightly says. Uh, over the long term, I don't expect Webjet to beat the market from here, despite a really good set of results today. I think it's probably better as a, a sell for me. Well, that's what makes a market indeed. Yeah. There's, uh, well, perhaps some liquidity for Carl to buy into there because yeah. uh, Scott's selling it. Exactly. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Buyers and sellers. Who Matched would have known? Off. Great. We can uh, start <laughs> running our own broker perhaps. Uh, it's some internal matching going on there. But um, nevertheless, uh, again, it's not something that I've ever really looked at too closely for, for my modest portfolio. Um, the travel theme, does it tickle your fancy by any chance? I mean, I know it's certainly been taking a lot of money out of my pocket. I'm not, I'm not seeing a return of it. I'm probably contributing to the profits of those companies. Yeah, no, I, uh, I don't. It's not, it's not a sector I like to go into too mm. much. That's, but that's just me personally. So. Yeah. 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 Anyway, again, some divergent views there, and uh, well, perhaps we'll get another one. Just Mark- worth noting. Sorry, speaking of travel, the Chinese, if they do have that big COVID outbreak oh, yeah. that was rumoured <clears throat> overnight in America, well. Who knows, we might be, they mightn't be travelling as much. You're giving me PTSD, it's scary. <laughs> no, it's I don't, February 2020 I, again, no, I don't no, want to go back there. No, we're not going to lockdowns, oh, but gosh. obviously there is concern that there is another big COVID outbreak there okay. and there's concerns over the efficacy of the vaccines and what they would actually do, because let's face it, poor old China really hasn't emerged from the old lockdowns, have they? Well, no, and uh, a pretty tepid recovery so yeah. far, it has to be said. But um, mm. we'd love to get a view uh, on Webjet and Mark Garner is at the desk from Macro Capital, of course, as I'm sure everyone is well aware. Um, so Webjet, you were making an interesting point too, just in terms of um, assessing the stock based on obviously the chart, which looks ugly there, um, yeah. but also the fact that at, in terms of market capitalization terms, it's, it's actually, well, at all time highs, is that right? Absolutely, yeah. It's about 30 odd percent through where those uh, $17 highs were. So. Mm. We're talking, you know, somewhere in the twenty dollar region, based on, you know, share, because there was obviously a lot of shares issued, and, and it's yeah. and it's very very few times I will actually go back to take up that exercise. But obviously during COVID, you know, there were extraordinary measures, and you know, going back and looking at, you know, well, it's not even back to twenty nineteen levels. Well, it's not only is it back there, it's well through it. Mm-hmm. So. With um, obviously Carl there being a chartist uh, for Stock of the Day and Scott, you know, being a bit more fundamental, I I think in this case, um, this is one of those rare occasions where the charts don't actually do, you know, do the work for you. You need to go back and look at the, you know, look at if you look at the chart in terms of market cap, mm. and the charts are quite nicely on, on programs like TradingView, um, and 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 possibly, you know. It's maybe where you know the technical rules don't necessarily apply and the fundamental rules do. But um, you know, I think Flight Centre sort of took the option at the time to issue sort of more debt, um, which has kind of backfired on them in a, in a yeah. way. Webjet's probably taken the smart um, the smart route by issuing shares, but um, but Webjet, don't get me wrong, I, I look, I much prefer corporate travel at the moment. Um, they've just won that um, that enormous one point six billion pound contract with uh, mm. the the UK government and. Um, <clears throat> They've been lagging a little bit, but they're um, they're a hell of a lot more financially stable. They they made acquisitions because they were very cashed up prior to COVID um, over that COVID period, which um, the annual report or the investor presentations say that um, getting back to 2019 levels of travel for business, their business should be set anywhere around the 75% bigger uh, mark, and they didn't issue shares so. There's quite a bit of upside. You've got you know, um, price targets in corporate travel around the $28 mark. So mm. we were, um, we've sort of, we're out of the sector here at the moment. It just seems to have stalled. There was a bit of director selling over the last couple of days with corporate travel. But, um, 
But, but just circling back to Webjet, they had a um, one of the best sort of fin- uh, web beds business, which was just really taking off. It was one of the fastest growing um, sort of tech tech platforms in the world. I think in two thousand and nineteen, before we had COVID, um, you know, COVID hit the travel sector. So they had a lot of really good things in the works, and that was obviously that really, you know, that really hurt them the um, the pandemic. So. You know, it's not to say that it's going to necessarily stop here at the moment, but just be wary that that is one where, you know, price is not the best indicator, probably having a look at it in terms of market cap. And I, and I think it can probably, you know, those those new core businesses and the fact that a lot of competition probably got taken out over the pandemic, I think, you know, being 30% above those 2019 highs is more than justified. But whether it goes much, you know, much further, I'd be a little bit cautious overall. So with that, uh, if you're on the call right now, that'd be a hold call or something like that. No, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be selling. You'd be selling. Um, okay. Just, but, but more around broader weakness. But also, it's yeah, it's, it's had a pretty magnificent run. Mm. Um, and particularly if you've gotten in, you know, over the last 12 months or so, um, yeah. You and look, if you have owned it prior to that, well, unless you participated in the cap raises, it's you know, it was one of those really unfortunate things. Mm-hmm. But you know, thankfully, it didn't go under because it, it was probably a very, uh, you know, if the pandemic had stretched for four mm-hmm. years or something, it'd be very real possibilities. So mm-hmm. um, you know, it's good to see a good company bouncing back. Mm-hmm. What about uh, in the travel space? What about Qantas? You know, mixed yeah. views by some people. On I, it's not really, look, I think they've done a really good job. It's not really one that I, I don't know, it's, I don't like airlines. Um, <laughs> Fair and enough. And it's just, and it's, and it's so incredibly tricky. I'd rather be, um, you know, I'd, I'd rather be in something, along, you know, corporate travel or Webjet, you yeah. know, flight centre at certain times. It's not really, um, or um, event hospitality has got some like, quite good resorts and things, but I, it's, um and I don't think there's much edge in Qantas from a retail investor's point of view. I mean, the, the institutions it, it would be analysing that stock to death, going and meeting with the company. I just, I don't really see where there's, you know, where, a, you know, a self-managed super um, a trader or yeah. um, investor is really going to gain too much sort of edge out of that. Whereas, I mean, if you look at Qantas compared to, say, Webjet or corporate travel or since November, um, I dare say Qantas is bringing up the rear in terms of returns. So, mm. um yeah, it's just not, you know, it's one of the, I put it in the basket of like the big four. I, I, it's great that Australia has them, um, <laughs> but I just, I don't necessarily feel the need to invest in them. Fair <laughs> enough. So, yeah, that's, yeah, I don't think good, you're good Robinson Crusoe in that department. Yeah. <laughs> I like returns. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, ouch. Uh, yeah. Um, let's get to the materials now because I just looked in on sort of where the, I think the market's actually closed for the day, but uh, the material is. space is down one and a half percent. And and you were noting as well that that sort of gathered, gathered steam at the back end of the session, especially as uh, sort of the Dalian, or, Dalian iron ore contract came online. Mm. So. Uh, is there any signal that we can take from that? Obviously, there's there's a few little technical levels I think that's broken down. Yeah, so Fortescue dropped through the 200-day moving average, which oh. hasn't broken for quite a while, and through um, you know, and it was down nearly four percent, I think yeah. overall. Um, look, we I've been I think Fortescue is probably you know heading towards the sort of 14 mark, and it does tend to accelerate once it breaks down. Mm. Um, and I think you know I think. Uh, Andrew Forrest is obviously not doing a hell of the company a hell of a lot of favours, incentivising the board towards different things, muddying the waters in terms of dividends and shifting to. Um, I mean, I think it's a great concept, but for shareholders who are primarily in there for the dividend, I think it muddies the waters a little bit. And um, and when the iron ore price drops, you know, people tend to switch out of that lower quality grade that they mm. have into into the higher quality grade. But um, and as you can see, sort of BHP, I think was only down a couple of percent, but. Um, yeah, the, those numbers out of China haven't been particularly spectacular at all, and um, we we are quite high in terms of the range, and we're a long way away from um, the next um, you know the next earnings season, and you know looking at a fairly certain US recession and things. So, you know, I, we've we normally hold a core position almost always in BHP. Um, it's the first time in ages we really haven't, but when we'll, we'll be sort of considering it below. You know, below forty dollars or around thirty-eight, maybe. Um, if you know, if there's a market panic, yeah. and we'll start to scale back in because it is one of our it is one of our core stocks. But um, you know, they're, they're iron ore, obviously, with the disappointing China recovery. You know, copper, I've got great hopes for on the latter part of the year with the 
you know, that supply gap emerging, but copper just doesn't do well when we're looking at recessionary um, no. environments. So, they're, you know, we, we sort of, you know, again, just pretty happy to be patient and wait for, for good levels in these stocks because if we, if, I mean, if you can pick up great, you know, really great stocks like BHP and Fortescue at, you know, $16 in Fortescue or $38 or something in BHP, you know, you know you're going to be pretty right right? and you know you're going to get great returns over the next couple of years. BHP have got some fantastic projects in the pipeline with that potash, expanding that copper, etc. So it's just more... um more just trying to use the broader market weakness um, in, to our favour to get into our preferred stocks. And look, they are cyclical, but you know, they're, they're general long-term holds yeah. overall, and uh, and they're very very well-run businesses. So mm. it, it um, you know, but obviously at forty-nine dollars, we just we had to sell the last portion. It just it just seemed you know yeah. trading towards record highs, leading yeah. into a almost certain recession. And, uh, and uncertainty around China was it just seemed it, just, it seemed really really expensive um, up there so it, um, yeah but we're always looking to get back into that so <clears throat> we've we've pretty much almost cut out about almost 50 percent of the market so we've sort of banks but <laughs> at the moment you know materials but yeah. uh, what about some of these uh, so-called technology stocks technology one and Wise Tech, they're back at, you know, all time highs. I mean, they're not reporting for a while. Is it a case of, you know, great companies just run too far at the moment? I think they have. And, you know, I think we've spoken a couple of times about the, you know, the Nasdaq's primarily being held up by, you know, talk of uh, AI in a, in, a, in a small amount of stocks, <laughs> which is not going to produce any revenue anytime soon. So it's just, you know, we can, you know, that's sort of... Um, if everyone's a believer, they may stay up here, but if cracks start to show, I mean, I find it really surprising that the two-year yields jump by 35 basis points back up to their, mm. um, back up to its highest point since uh, the SVB um, collapse, and, um, and the Nasdaq's continued to rally, mm. and it seems very irrational, and a lot of those stocks are at extraordinarily, they're at sort of, I think, nearly 19-month highs in terms of PE, um, and, we're, and we're talking, they're at, at levels... Um, where you know earning, some of the earnings downgrades that they're given the mm. company's given guidance on um are way lower than the last time they were up here in these prices exactly so that's the thing it's not like earnings has been mm. shooting the lights out i mean revenues have actually been coming down it was just a case of oh well it wasn't as bad as feared so we'll all pile in yeah so look it may be the next quarterly update where the reality that ai is a fair <laughs> way away from actually producing revenue um <laughs> And, you know, and potentially, look, if this two-year gets back above four, you yeah. know, four and a half percent, I think we're in the four, it's about 435 or thereabouts yeah, at the moment. Yeah, 427. Um, is, yeah, and so I, I think people will start to, you know, start start to wonder and, uh, you know, it could be a bit of a game of musical chairs. You yeah. just want to make sure you get a seat before the music stops, basically, and, uh, and you know, take those profits because it's been an extraordinary run. I mean, it's been, I think if you um, look at a market map over the last month, mm. it's just those seven stocks are green and everything else is pretty much red. So yeah. it, um, and even Tesla is up an extraordinary amount this year and they've had um, huge margin compression. They've cut their prices six times in five months. Um, you know, they've had production um, ramp up, but there's been no, there's no real reason for them to have drifted back up this high. Mm. Um, Except, you know, I, I guess it's um, a lot of these momentum following systems are just, they, they keep going until someone gives them a reason to get out. Yeah, and I was uh, just looking at Meta stock price as well, because it was back at 250 bucks per share, which is the Nvidia is the, is, the, is the one that's really shaken it. It's up 100%. Yeah. And it's and back <sighs> up, I think, heading towards, it's not far off all time highs. I think when you look at the, I think I reposted a heat mm. map the other day. I mean, but they're all. You know, Apple and Microsoft are trailing. They're only up 32%. Oh, but, they are, they are, but they're incredibly cyclical businesses. They, yeah. they don't, it's not, you know, they're streaming services. They're, they're, they're brand new phones. And these phones, are, these phones are a couple of grand. Like yeah. it's a, like I, you know, if you've got tightening household budgets, like what, mm. stick, with your, stick with your old phone for a year mm. um, and, and things like that. So, it, you know, it'll, look, it'll be interesting to see how it washes out. Um, markets have been very quiet too. I don't think we've had very big volume for, for um, at least a good month and a half now, truth be told. Like, yeah. So we, we do tend to see certain stocks just drift until actual institute, you know, it's met by, it's met by real volume. So, and, um, and I don't think it's going to change much this week. Um, and we've got Memorial Day on Monday as well. Yeah. So, um, 
So the you know, US Congress has got four, four working days to negotiate, come to an agreement, write a bill, get it passed. Um, so I think yeah. there'll be a bit more of a, there'll be probably more of a freak out, um, you know, come the weekend, letting into Friday and and uh, I think core PCE on Friday night. Yeah, so, correct. Um, yeah. yeah. So God, God help us if that's a strong number um, because there's already enough concerns sort of floating around you know, about the debt ceiling and, um, you know, they don't, they don't want to be worrying about the Fed possibly raising rates again. Um, so, yeah, I'm... Very, very happy to uh, have get your cash. Ca yeah, have cash and catch up on some reading at the moment. So. <laughs> exactly. Lots of research time. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, well, sage words as always, Mark. Uh, really appreciate the insights. We'll, we'll finish it up there for the day. Mark Garner from Macro Capital. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay, let's get across the leaders in that gut, shall we? Okay, leaders and laggards, let's see what made it to the top and the bottom of the market. First, the leaders, and uh, well, it was a very gold kind of day. It is a bit senses. gold, isn't it? Isn't yeah. that interesting? Did the, the gold price do much overnight? Uh, no, overnight it picked did. up a little bit. Again, yeah. it just seems to be that um, debt ceiling trade, basically. Yeah, um, yeah. Run out of puff, I reckon, in the in the shorts. It was run up pretty, pretty aggressively. Um, but yeah, every time we start to see some, uh, well, I suppose, animus emerging once again between both sides, it uh, very quickly turns into an appreciating gold price. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, well, of course, as well, you spoke um, quite extensively with Chris Weston today too. About yeah, it's a really interesting. As well. Yeah, really interesting chat. So everyone has to check out that one. It is uh, probably, you know, a little bit technical, but definitely worth listening to in terms of post the debt ceiling deal, mm -hmm. assuming it does get done at some stage, yeah. what's going to happen to liquidity because uh, it will have implications for not only um, you know equities but also the gold price down the track. So yeah, okay. definitely a listen I think for everybody. But there you go, Webjet up yep. four and a half percent, Fletcher Building. I was actually just chatting to that New Zealand economist, really interesting that yeah, yeah. new housing starts haven't slowed at this stage um, even though the home prices of existing homes are off about 17% but they think they are expecting that possibly Did to slow down. Do you say that was even though you know you're sort of like rates are high? You think I think they've got immigration like like us and you right. know strong immigration levels okay. but you know it probably will slow down they are looking for a mild recession at least in New Zealand yeah and I think uh, what did come out of the IBNZ today of course was that uh, yep. well they downgraded their forecasts a little bit for yep. inflation but also just pointing to, to weaker demand which I guess is the double-edged sword of, uh, of raising interest mm. rates but um, let's mm. let's go to the laggards um, and have a look at uh, those, and we do have some breaking news that we'll get to just in a moment. But uh, LaVisa, uh, that, that consumer story that seems to be, uh, I mean, I'd love to see- if, sorry, Eagers, gone. really, both of mm. them, you could put that in that category. I think Eagers have guided to um, results the same as last year. I think that's what Yeah, I it was read. basically in line with, with where it was in 2022, if, yeah. I, if I remember correctly, because I, I was writing the story this morning, but that was eight hours ago, so I, that, that information ends up <laughs> out of my head by about midday. Um, but nevertheless, uh, yeah, it was uh, a little bit soft. And uh, again, I, I'd love to see just some of the um, deal flow or the, the, the flow that goes through, maybe even just some of the retail brokers when it comes to La Visa, whether it's a bit of a proxy, a, a trade uh, used by punters just to get exposure to that broader space, because we had uni uh, Universal today Stores, down significantly, down, down 24%. Yep. Uh, sort of, I suppose, you can lump that in that basket. And what, who else recorded in the last few days? Reported, came off significantly, and LaVisa came off as well. Having a black, I thought again. it was Universal Stores. The no, that was today, today, but it was one yesterday. a few days ago where LaVisa got belted as well off Ooh, some, some of the results. Anyway. Call, oh, City Chic. City Chic, that's what it was. Bang. There we go. The All old right. broker in me, still there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah can never, never, can never uh, keep a good, a good broker down, perhaps. Um, okay, and uh, as you can see there too, there was a bit of um, a play out of the rare earths space and, well, that's just... Um, I suppose a commodity story as well as just the fact that, again, punters are probably taking some uh, risk off the table there. Very, um, I suppose, speculative space. But let's get to the small caps. We chuck some names in the hat and oh, out we come. Oh, wow. Uh, well, we had three from five that we actually knew yesterday. But, it's uh, not looking good today, though, uh, I have to that's, say. That's, that's zero Civ, from five. Civmec up 11%. I don't yeah. know that one. Clarity Farmer up 10%. Nadine's normally good with these ones. And, uh, well, she's getting her back, uh, back cracked at the car, so she can't help us. So we're going to move on. Let's go to the laggards. Um, well, oh, Universal, Universal Stores, Store. there we go. yes. And, um, 29 oh. Metals, dear yeah. oh me, down 19%. Yeah, oh, Drone Shield, we've had Drone Shield on a few times as well on, yes. uh, on the show. They're very, very kind with their time. But there you go. 
there are the small caps. And uh, we did say we wanted to get to some breaking news, Danny. Yeah, so uh, Danny. UK inflation has dropped sharply in April and largely due to a uh, retreat in energy prices. So it's come down to 8.7% year on year and um, that is down from 10.1% in March. Uh, but what is more important is actually above consensus estimates of 8.2% according to a Reuters poll. Um, so going in the right direction, but food and non-alcoholic uh, beverage prices continued to rise in April. So they've still got that problem there. I mean, they've had empty shelves. Yeah, um, and I wouldn't mind just adding to that too, yeah, if I could. Core, core CPI actually increased. So it's gone from 6.2% uh, and the forecast was to, for that to remain steady. Right. It's actually increased to 6.8%. They're that's, not going to like that. No, that's, that's a problem. That's when you start talking about sticky inflation. Um, obviously more details one might have to dig through to get a sense of uh, the meaning of it all, but that, um, that actually is, is rather concerning on balance, I think. So Absolutely. Um, maybe we'll be talking about that tomorrow morning, maybe not, we'll, we'll see how we go, but the markets will have to digest it. Uh, this is on what's what's on overnight now, and, oh, incidentally, cool, coincidentally, um, Bank of England Governor Bailey speech. Speaking, yeah. Might, and might a few, few last minute amendments to that one, perhaps. Yeah, and um, also Janet Yellen is going to be speaking, no doubt sending out very, uh, I suppose, hawkish tones about guys get your your act into gear asap i would have thought let's do it um yeah. fomc minutes too so we'll have uh, both arms of policy being scrutinized both the fiscal and the monetary overnight uh tomorrow though and uh well i hope you like what i've put in here the ex-dividends for tomorrow so we're oh, right across yay. it already after we disgraced ourselves yesterday uh, about brought, elders. Brought, brought absolute shame <laughs> to the osbiz name um but no there we go uh new farm uh aristocrat legend we'll say is that origin no no orica orica, orica. Yeah. uh and agm south 32 costa group as well um so they'll be uh fascinating to watch from both an energy and sort of food theme i guess you could say all right well, that does it for today, Danny. It um, does indeed. Been another wild ride, but it uh, has been a wild ride today. Not at all. It's uh, been really, really dull. But we will uh, obviously yeah, here have at Ausbiz. It's always a wild ride. Oh, it's, it's always yeah. That, that's absolutely true. Uh, anyway, you can catch up on all the fantastic interviews that we did do today. I have to say, we got a lot of uh, footage from the Morning Star conference. Yes, so, absolutely. Um, well worth checking in with those. Definitely worth checking in uh, with those. Everything on the platform is also high, obviously always high quality. So uh, get across all the news and interviews. In the meantime, have a great night and we will see you tomorrow morning. The COB is brought to you by eToro. Invest in ASX shares with $0 commission.